simply is about like all the questions that you guys have like mm -hmm. about the school or just some things that you want to see like change or just some things you have questions about. So um, I'm gonna read off like some questions that you guys have and then how can go and answer them because I feel like you guys should at least have a chance to ask the questions that you want to ask. And if you have questions like sitting out there, you can answer. There's a mic going around, so if you have a question, it'll come around and you can ask your question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's get this started. The trio right here. Right. Okay. The first question. The first. Oh, well, I don't know if it's a question, but it says. The school is really disorganized. It isn't really what it was when I first came in. There wasn't a bunch of fights in the beginning of the year. The bathrooms were not locked. The doors were not crowded for the first week. Also, the, I think the safety precautions for Corona weren't taken very seriously. When we first came in, because we were getting sick, including myself, and even after I left, people I knew had contributed to me. So, yeah. This school is kind of kind of crumbled. So what I heard was that you feel as though that the school is disorganized. So let me address the disorganization that you may uh, encounter or you may feel that is happening. Uh, for one, it is different, right? Everyone is coming from a post-pandemic uh, situation and no one knew how to run a school and do or the impact of what COVID had done to us personally, like how we can actually navigate that, right? You can't really plan that out. Like we plan how to, like if you look around, you can see uh, posters on each seat, what seat to sit in and what seat is not. That's an organization that we chose not to follow. So it's not that it is the organization or the disorganization of it all, it's whether or not that we choose to follow. We were all informed of wearing our masks, we were all informed to stay three feet or to six feet apart. Did we choose collectively to follow that protocol? So I won't categorize that as a disorganization, it was more so of our obedience you know, of following or adhering to following the protocol. So when we have, and this is our first year that we had over a thousand of students enrolled at God. So before, like when your ninth graders came in, or you, right, class 2022, I mean, you were the largest class. We came in around 375 students, but now we all get down to like 100 and something, right? 175, I believe, right? So, give and take if everyone came to school, right? So, it may seem as if it's more larger, well, more chaotic, right? Because now you have a larger group of students that, you know, that came after you guys, and now, you know, we have a larger school. So, it's like more students that are not following the protocol and not there. Now, when you try to get to a place like I believe you mentioned whites and you mentioned um, the bathrooms, a lot of bathrooms, right? But we're not mentioning the sources of it all. So the whites comes in is because, okay, we've been out 18 months, right? Uh, we are a high school, so we deal with a lot of emotions and um, building up our identity. No one wants you to be looked upon as being a punk or some other, and you feel like you gotta do in your right to something, so a fight will break out. We also are uh, not thinking about how people are influencing, uh, being influenced by TikTok, like other social medias now. This is the first time TikTok, I mean, TikTok as a source, would tell us or tell um, their listeners to go to your school and break the scene. Go to the school and set up a firecracker. And we actually have people listening. And they filmed it to get <laughs> the accreditation for it. So don't blame that on the school, per se. It's not the school. It's about more so of why we, you know, do things and don't throw them seeds on my school. You know, putting their hands in the bag or something like that. Don't do it. 
You, you get what I mean? So I don't want to, I hope I'm answering this question in a way that you know you, you want me to explain it, but I don't want to call it disorganization. It's just about, you know, we can organize, you know, ways to follow COVID and everything else, but why are we not adhering to the protocol? Okay. <laughs> the next, the next statement is the bad wrongs, the lack of communication, the blatant ignorance towards one another, and the lack of safety control. Right here. Okay. Okay. The lack of communication. The lack of communication. You gotta be more specific about this because uh, we've been sending out, right? We've been sending uh, robocalls. Online communication or what? He just says lack of communication, but it's But I mean, as the president, team head president, do you know like what it is that they think of or that, that maybe, you know, lack of communication? Do y'all know what they So lack of communication is like y'all would tell the teacher the last minute and then the teacher would tell us at the last minute and then we're all arguing. Give me an example. Savannah, for example, why would we? We didn't know that we had to go all the way up to the sixth floor until she started checking all the bathrooms on the floor to see if they were locked or not. And it's like, so y'all didn't tell us until the last minute of the day. Okay, so I apologize if you feel as though like you were told last, um, but what you would have been told last is I will make sure that I tell the teachers and I will uh, be more confident of letting the teachers know that this is what we're doing, right? So we had a uh, mass email or mass text that we send out. So if I make a, a quick decision, such as like let's lock all the bathrooms, then by the time that communication is shared, that's like an individual thing. And I apologize if you feel as though, because that's not my intent, all right? I would like for us to, be, and this is why we have platforms like this, so I can hear your voice more, and then we can keep that line of communication with you. So if you feel as though that you got to the last, that that would be the line of communication. Like I would let my teachers know, and then they will, you know, let you know. But if you felt as though, you know, you should have known sooner of why or who we did, I apologize. Um, the next part is the lack of safety control. The lack of safety control. I have my own perspective of lack of safety control, but I need to know from your lens of what you see. Because what I see is lack of um, safety control, you may not see, or you may. So I need, when you ask questions, please be a little bit more explicit to what it is that you're speaking of. So if anybody can elaborate on that, what do you mean by lack of safety control? Um, maybe, well, we kept leaving the school, like for when they was doing firecrackers and stuff like that, and y'all had us go to the church, and then everybody was just like all scattered everywhere. So like, maybe that's one of the reasons why they said, so again, you're not talking about, I think, all right, before it becomes like a blame thing, right? And it's okay that you, you would expect for us to keep you safe, right? But is it anywhere where I tell you to bring in a firecracker and let it all go? No. Is it any conception that I give you that I encourage you to bring in a firecracker? It's not. Like your safety is my safety too. I live here too, right? <laughs> so I don't want you to feel that way. But as far as the safety um, issue, let's talk about the church. That was, uh, again, one of our first drills of evacuation. Um, once we were able to work collectively as a team, I believe that the end result of the church experience worked out well, right? It took us a minute. But why? Because as individuals, if you feel as though that you are in a dangerous situation, why not be an uh, assistance to the leader and say, like, this is where we need to be? Instead, we had students who run all the way up to the top, like right now. We know not to go up to the balcony because that's not where we sit. Even in the church, that's not our home. So why would we treat a place that lends, you know, us assistance, and we treat it bad that way, right? They took tall signs on here, we're trying to leave trash. We do that here. 
And it just like, I don't want to label it as a lack of safety when we're not participating in it. Because everyone is an individual. And we can't do this by ourselves. And I don't want you to keep thinking that, okay, as administrators, we would say, let's go over to church. I will make that community, that uh, partnership with the church so that we can have somewhere to go. But now it's the team, it's all of us to say, okay, we have somewhere to go, let's go. Instead, we want to go to McDonald's, we want to go to the store, we want to take our time, or you want to fight to get in, or when you get in, you want to do whatever you want to do. We know how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, so we got to take ownership of that as well. Um, the next part of the question is, what are you doing towards each other? <coughs> ignoring towards each other? Ignoring. Oh, ignoring one another. Anybody can elaborate on that? They probably talk about a teacher and a student. I doubt that they talk about each other. Oh, like teacher and students? Yeah, because it's some ignorant teachers that we have. Exactly. And if you feel that way, right, then again, Remember, it's your education, and I stepped in here and I let you know where I stand at with this. And this is why we have this platform. You are just as responsible for your education as a teacher is. If you don't feel like you're learning, that's why you raise your hands and you ask questions. Right? That is why you make sure that you let them know what are your thoughts and where you stand at in your learning process. If you cannot advocate for yourself respectfully, Right? Respectfully, because no one is going to accept you talking to them in any tone that you think that is going to be, a, you know, you have to be approachable. But again, you have to be a participant in your learning process. So if you shut down, let's say you feel like you're being ignored and you just shut down, either you sit in class and don't say anything, you just do your work and you just think you're supposed to get the grade, or you skip the class and you do your work and you expect to get the grade, then again, you have to take some accountability and ownership on that as well. Or again, like in platforms like this, if you can say who is being disrespectful, who is it, you know, specifically is ignoring you, then that is another level that we can definitely talk to. Maybe we can have a teacher student mediation. Maybe we can talk about like whatever issue that you and that teacher may have, and it may be a personal issue, a personality type of conflict that you may have, but it's not something that you can't overcome. Because I don't believe that none of the teachers in here truly do not care. It is a struggle when you have different personalities in front of you that is resistant to what is it that you're trying to teach them, or when you're trying to lend out your hand, you're not as open to help me teach you. Because if you're saying like, it may, it's a teacher that don't know how, or a first year teacher, the need, like, really to gain their experience and probably lending on you to help them, right? I got a lot of first year, fresh out of college teachers, and you're their first experience, right? And no one ever gets everything 100% perfect during their first year. This is my first year as a principal. I have to learn and stretch and manage more than I ever had as a teacher, as an assistant principal. So you can't, you have to help me, help us, so I can help you, and it can be a whole circle, a whole community of me. That is what I'm looking for. Not just to like charge that and say what we're not doing, how can we improve or advance ourselves? That is the thinking that I would hope that we can have. Can I ask a question before y'all move on? I got a question. Go ahead. Did you write some questions down though? Yeah, oh, she I did. Okay, great. Um, even, okay, so I'm not saying that all of us come up well, but we have to come up well. Let's hear the mic to let everybody in here. Get on the mic, don't be shy. <laughs> okay, so I don't come up disrespectful when I'm talking to the teacher, but if, when I do ask him or her a certain question, they decide to take their tone with me in a disrespectful way. So therefore, I get disrespectful too, but what? And now we're going to move on. I can't have a, a, um, a teacher and still at me on him because I just feel like he's disrespectful. Okay, so I think I just addressed that, um, meaning that um, 
And thank you for keeping everything anonymous because we're not here for like 50 people on spot. Um, but what I am suggesting again, that you can advocate for yourself, especially in a respectful manner. And if you think, remember, at the end of the day, you're still children, right? You, you are transitioning or young adults, right? You're young adults and you're transitioning. So it's still something that needs to be, a, like you still need an advocate for you. So again, if you think that that teacher cannot be the advocate for you, there's someone else in the building that can be an advocate for you, right? Who else did you have that relationship with? And I will ask that that would be your next step. So if you can't get through to the teacher personally, like, you know what, this is not working, then let me move to someone else who can advocate for me. Because at the end of the day, you're risking your education. And I hope you're listening to my response because at the end, right? Because I don't want you to go the whole entire school year feeling that same way. That really disappoints me in a way because, again, you need this training. That's what high school is all about, it's a training session. And if you don't get everything that you need, when you go out there and you're ready to apply that, you're going to be missing something. And you're going to be missing something because it was nothing but a personality barrier that we could have had in front. So I would ask you that your next step is whoever you feel as though if you're an advocate in here, an adult or you know, administrator or whatever, that you would have them right on your behalf. All right? Maybe an adult and adult can get through better. Um, so someone says, I would like to say it is not fair that when y'all opened the sixth floor for us to use the bathroom when our classes are on the lower floor. For a female, it is hard to hold your breath. Yeah, and I, I, I am real good at it. So um, I guess my question, my uh, follow-up question would be, I haven't thought about when to open it up again, right? So let's say, okay, I closed it because they kept, on every floor, they were breaking a part of my bathroom, right? The sink or the stalls, or they would trash it up, they were smoking in here on every floor, right? And so we moved the crowd to another part that we were able to start identifying students and we started to, you know, give out consequences, right? So it seemed like it kind of like died down just a little bit, but I didn't think about, and maybe this is a question that I can ask you guys, is to say, well, how can we ease our way back into opening up the bathroom? Because again, if we open them up and then they both the sink, I have to close it anyway. So I'm not closing them out of spite. Please do not believe that I'm closing them out of spite. They out of use. They simply out of use, right? So once the repairs come, because repairs, you know, take a while. You gotta, you know, send out the 440, get a working order, so then they can bring somebody in. All that great stuff, you know, the whole process. But tell me, what are your suggestions of how to start opening up the bathrooms again? And but it also had to be some because communication has been out. Everybody pissed off about the bathroom. So now you get it. Everybody the communication out why the bathroom was closed and don't nobody really like it. Now, how do we shift the behavior and saying once we open it, would they do it again? Right? And how can we make sure that we live in the space that is comfortable for everybody? And it seems like that some people are being punished for a few people incidents, but it's not the case. The bathrooms are simply out of use. It's broken. You get what I mean? It's simply out of use. So is it anything, anybody in here have any suggestions of how and when we can open up the bathroom by changing the shit or shifting the mindset of students who are likely to break or make the bathrooms out of use? Um, yes, sorry. can we get the mic to right here? Um, I feel like, so like, if you know, like, the exact time that you were doing it, like, if you could, so you know how, like, the school opens at a certain time, you could plan, like, a time frame for when the bathroom is open. So if somebody doesn't use the bathroom, like, when they come in, nobody uses the bathroom in the house, like, whatever. But if they do, and they're late or something like that, then you could, like, oh, well, the bathroom is closed, you gotta use the bathroom, you need to go use it when the time is there. If you know that you don't have to use the bathroom every minute while you're walking, you might want to stop and not drink your water. But Person, I can't help you. Like, have a time frame for when the bathroom is open. So, you, like, switch it. 
like, I don't know how to put it, but like, they're from Ethiopia. The people, like she said, you don't see them letters for all three times. And then girls are like, we have real problems, so like, we have to go to the airport regardless. And everybody's <coughs> problems are different time groups. So I feel like we should just like try to put them on a time frame, even though that's still not fair, but it's, a, it's something. Right, so that's what the whole suggestion about the six school bands was. Um, because everyone, we knew everyone had lunch, right? And lunch go from 9.30 to 1 o'clock. So the bathrooms are open, you know, sometimes you had that break in between so that they can like uh, clean up the tables and everything else. So um, from 9.30 to 1, we knew everyone had to go up to the six school. So that's why, you know, six school. Um, but throughout the, the, uh, the building, we're a large building, but we don't have a lot of space. Right, and that's why you see like it's not a lot of people who are adults in the hallways, right? So um, for me to leave, let's say if I open up the fifth floor bathroom, right? What's the fifth floor bathroom about to use, right? Because that's what most bathrooms that people were using was the fifth floor and the fourth floor or the sixth floor, right? They really use the first, second, or the third, you know, or the first floor when they first come in. So that so the second and the third. So we're not gonna open those because really nobody will really be there as much, right? Um, the fourth is out of service. The fifth, because they both want stuff, but the fifth is really out of service. I feel like, but you said, have you seen how you said the first floor and nobody will use it? They might right. really use the bathroom, they're gonna come to the first floor and use the bathroom. Yes, so if I have a, 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 a claimant stand that's right there, they can monitor the bathroom, right? Then it's open. So that's why we close the six and then use the first because now I don't need people in the lunchroom anymore. I can bring them down and then I'll open up that. So that's, I'm saying we use that to kind of use the bathroom, but that's not where most people are housed. Most of the students are housed on the fourth, fifth, and the sixth floor. But whatever bathroom they're closest to, they're gonna go to. So if they're right. like on the fourth floor, they're like, okay, the first floor is closer, I'm gonna go to the bathroom down there. But right. if they're on the fifth floor, they're automatically gonna go to the sixth floor if the fifth floor bathroom's not open. Right. So, I don't want to over police, but I can't open them unless I have an adult right there and be there. So what's stopping me is like I don't have an adult that to be there until after lunch, because all my adults are really stuck in the lunch room during that time, right? So like school police is right here, you know, but that's around the corner because they will still do whatever. Yeah, I think we had some open on the first floor too before, right? When it was something easy that you can go ahead and hurry up and get down here, right? Um, my thing is, I don't want to over police. So forget about I don't have no climate status, right? But the issues that we had in the bathroom, let's say, you're talking about privacy, there wasn't ever no privacy because you always had six girls in the bathroom at one time anyway, you could sit there and just do, right? Um, or like a cut, or then you had someone to go in to go smoke, right? How can we open up these bathrooms and then it, then it's a fight break out, then they blame it on me and say it's unsafe, right? I have unsafe things, but you was in the bathroom. You get me? So there's no, the, the story can go, you know, go as far as it possibly can. My thing is, when can we, I need to build trust. I'm gonna tell you where I am. I don't trust right now because I don't feel like we're together. I feel like you're blaming me for locking the bathrooms and saying that, hey, you're being unfair to us because we only got one bathroom and we can't go when we want to. But guess what? When you had all four, all, all the floors open, you didn't do right by the bathrooms anyway, right? It was nasty, you, you cut in there, you smoke in there, you broke things in there, the, the soap dispensers, you pull the soap dispensers off the wall. Y'all know it, you, you know I'm not telling you the story. It's just that I don't have the money, right? Because that comes out of our budget to repair that. And then I get blamed parents or you saying that I'm not um, keeping you safe. So the, if I need to keep you safe, Right then, I'm gonna have to have it where I have people here, and that's on the sixth floor. Tell me, give me suggestions of how you would like for me to run through this narrative, but be fair. Please be fair to me in the decision that I have to make. Because I need more, I'm thinking I need more student leaders, you know, like the 
because you're there all the time. I got more of you than I had more of my staff. Even teachers, they got to be in their classrooms or somewhere else. So please, let's navigate through this. There's no right or wrong. It's just like more so let's brainstorm because I do stand in a place that I want to be clear. I do stand in a place that I don't want to over-police you. And I want you to be free to go to the bathroom anytime you want to. But when it happens that you never had privacy, you had to go in there and smell the secondhand smoke. You couldn't wash your hands because they tore down the, the um, soap dispenser or hair all in the sink. You, you know, it just was nasty. And then you, then again, how can I not be judged or criticized and saying that I'm not keeping you safe when a fight and something break out? Tell me, tell me what.
if I even death, jumped bro. into in this headache, or like the fights outside, right? Because I still link that to you because it's still your safety because everybody exited out the same doors. So how can I have this fight, even though it was like the 10th graders mostly, but then not say anything to you? Or how can I sit there and say this missile when I know y'all leave out at one o'clock? You, you, you know what I'm saying? Or 12 or one o'clock sometimes. So um, you will hear, but just watch our approach. And if you didn't like the approach, then I apologize to make you were still resting in that frustration. But it wasn't, you didn't hear us say it's your fault and y'all gonna have to get yourselves better. You know, what you hear from me is, get yourself ready to get up out of here and you better get these um, certifications and your diploma and your credits. That is my, that's my thought to you guys, right? And don't choose work over school and right now and all that other great stuff. That's my message to see it. But like the stink bombs and all that other kind of stuff. I just definitely tell that you It says, why do you think you canceled the senior team lounge? Canceled the senior team, team, team lounge. lounge? Oh, um, I didn't really cancel it. Uh, there was um, back data that we had used um, to make that decision. But we needed the furniture as well. <laughs> we had more staff there. Remember, the school is larger than it ever has been. If you notice, there's really no empty classrooms. You know, I really don't have space for people or whatever. We gave the extra counselor, you know, things of that nature. And then not only that, uh, which the team lounge don't really have nothing to do with this class. It was more so like the class before, I believe, for one, COVID restrictions, you know, you can't have that. And secondly, it was more so, uh, it wasn't, the seniors never protect their space. So other classmates would come in and just sit and take advantage of it. Like, you know, our second floor should be y'all floor, but it's not y'all floor. It would be like ninth graders or 10th graders hanging around. You know what I'm talking about? Like just sitting on a radiator or whatever. There's no ownership in nothing. And until I can build a community with that, and so you know, sadly that y'all probably won't be here by the time we, we can really regenerate this. But, you know, that's the case. I need it to It says, can the senior project be extended to the end of February or the beginning of March? I haven't even started. Senior project? To when? To when? To the end of February or the beginning of March. End of February. Uh, tell me what is your hold up? Like, what is, but well, with some assistance, I think that is something that I have to make a decision with the teacher. Like, that's not something that I would want to make on my own. Um, you know, I, of course, you know, I can make an executive decision, but give me some more details. Give me what, what is it that is required of you. Maybe the requirements, you know, is a little bit more hefty, and you know, I'm like, okay, I agree with this. But if it's just something, like you gotta make the PowerPoints, then I'm not waiting until February, March for the PowerPoint. You know, so so I, this is just a question. I don't even I'll leave Mike. But um, for a senior project, is everybody supposed to do the same thing, or so, is every class supposed to be different? So senior, let me tell you, senior project is senior senior class project could be a ten page research paper and a presentation that you want to present in front of a board for approval. That's really what it is, right? Not an MLA or APA style. It's more so like, it's, again, transitioning to get you ready for college. Because that's the, that's the statement that you're going to need to be ready for college, right? Because if you're not writing or doing research papers about like 10 pages, when you get to college that first year, you want to struggle. But you better push through it, right? Because that's something you should be used to. If you're not doing that, you know, that's. I don't know what else to say to that right there. So that's really what the CA class project is based on what your program of study. So if you are in, like for instance, I was a cosmetology teacher. If you was in cosmetology, something about cosmetology you should have been researching, right? So maybe it would have been about, hey, why do 
most African American students wear hair pieces or wigs, or how what is the history of hair wigs, right? So you will research that, write it up in a ten piece paper, ten page paper, and then you would give me a six slide presentation to present in front of like industry um, leaders, right? Related leaders, uh, other um, CTE teachers, the administrator, you know, counselors or whatever, and let's say we here lined up like the idol or something or the voice, and you present, and then we approve it enough. That's really what it is. So this class doesn't have that level right right now, but next class will, because that's the level that I, I'm looking to have my students walk out of Davos with. Because when they transition to college, it won't be something new and foreign to them. Because raise your hand if you leave it here and you wrote a 10 page research paper. Very nice. Raise your hand if one of your teachers out of the four years you've been here that you wrote a research paper. 10 pages. <laughs> right? Let me know if you know MLA or APA. Exactly. And this is the hint that you want to have when you're in college. So this is what I'm saying about the attitudes and the, you know, we are going to fuss about the wrong thing. I didn't hear one question about, but this one question about instruction. It's about more so, yeah, I am fussing there, right? Yeah, because it's a balance for me. I care about, like, how you feel and how, you know, your daily have to in here. And, like, I expect the bathroom question. I, I, I expect it. But I also expect, like, where is my quality education? That's, that's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, so if you're not ready for it, then that's when you went. So we turn the, uh, the research paper into our writing or a shop. We turn the research paper into our shop. Right, and see your um, CTE teachers. Yeah. Why do sports have to give people money to pay for cheap? Why do sports have, I look at my athletes as different, right? My athletes, the question was why do athletes so, you're sitting in a seat where we had those who actually went to the NFL, NBA, right? Um, we're still making history. You know, coaches and all that great stuff, one of the things, all that great stuff. So, it's not far from you because you're sitting in the actual, actual seats. Most people who play athletes, who play a, a sport, actually have a dream or a goal to play on college level as well as professional level. So they have a way of getting a, a scholarship. So they can get like a, a, an athletic scholarship. But they, and they have different levels of school, D1, D2, D3. But because it's so competitive, they kind of distinguish who is going to be able to go to these schools not just based on a time, but also based on the academics. And if we don't balance that, because I have athletes that are playing on sports who's supposed to be in credit recovery. So they will win a game, but then they won't graduate. Tell me as your principal, would you accept that from me? And I don't know, right? I have students who play on the sports, they get D's and F's, failing the current classes, but yet go to practice every day. Is that right for me as a principal? Look at my title. Can I do that? No. So, in support of, all I'm asking is another report. Now, I also have, and this is where athletes don't look at it as any favor. Because once somebody knows that they have something that they can take from you, would they take it? Right? So let's take two scenarios. Student A and student B. Student A is not an athlete. Don't participate in no extracurricular activities. Student A runs the hall, cuts the class, or whatever. What really consequences can you do? Can you take anything away from them, really? But a suspension? But let's take my athlete. My athlete do the same thing as student A. What would the teacher do with student B? 
try to kick him off the team, right? Or try to foul him. But if I was getting dealt reports every day, and you still try to give me an F, ah, wait, hold on. Because every week you used to give me an A2 or an A1, and then how my report card is coming out a D or a C. That doesn't match up. I got proof right here. I got documentation right here. So the Delta report can work two ways. We can't always be on the defense all the time. You just got to go with the flow and to a point that you got to understand the system. If you want to be smart, then you have to sit there and say, okay, well, listen, this is only going to benefit me to get to my end goal. That's only if you have an end goal. If you want to be the neighborhood store, be the neighborhood store. Because, and if you, if you want to pay for it here at Dobbins, the trophy stays with me. You can look past the main office, those trophies been here since 1974, whatever. They don't go home with you. So really, you only, like, I'm using you. And you get no benefit from it. This, this is where I stand. So I'm really helping you to see another, like, until you can jump on and see what I see. Then, then, you know, you get like, okay, you know, you look back like that, that really helped me. You may not get it now, but later on you will. Because again, that trophy stays with me, not you. So let me help you get to your D1, D2, D3 school. So you can be an all-round college pick, you know, get into the NFL or whatever the other team, the NBA, and then you live your life. But that reward will be for you. Mine is only, you know, so that's why I love it. That's my favorite. I think not being able to get the work in this, not be, from not being here is not. Okay. I think not being able to get the work in this, not being here is not that bright because it can be important. It can be an important reason why someone did not come. Um, we don't, we don't think it's a good idea that if you miss school, you can, you can't really get the work that you need. Oh, yes, it is. Instruction is a seat time to me. Yeah. 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 Ye
Why is the red star blue? Why is it green? Participation. Um, this is something that we measure uh, your your uh, your growth, your academic growth. So it is just a tool. It's just a tool to see whether or not you learn. So you know how some like I ain't learning nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know this whatever. Well, you have to get a tool to see whether or not if you know. So story is one for participation. You know that it will help towards your grades, like extra credit, or if we um, count it as a test score. Guess what? The test scores are worth forty percent, and the benefit that you would get from it is that it will boost up your GPA. So when you apply to colleges and that your forty percent just from taking a step to star assessment will boost up your GPA. That's the more money that you get. So again, um, just know that is why it's graded. You are getting the benefit. Boost up that GPA. Remember the high, the A's give you four points, B's give you three points, and break it down and so forth. The higher your GPA is, the more money that you can actually get. It said, hey, my question is, can we bring someone older to our prom? If not, why? Also, if we do bring the baby, we have to pay $100 to it. Yes, you have to pay the 820 right? <laughs> Remember, we got bills, right? So, and it's per person, so yes. Uh, can you bring a baby that is older? We have those who put their dads. <laughs> we have those who put their uncles. Right? I don't know what you talk about older, because at one point, um, I'm a little, I'm not going to say that you cannot, so I'm going to say yes is the answer, right? But please be aware of, just like your age here, you know how you're like 17, 18, raise your hand if you're 18. Awesome. And you know how you hear with like 15, 16 year olds or 14 year olds, right? The young ones. If you, I'm just give you, let me give you this scenario. If you, as an 18 year old, fight like an 11th grader who is like 17 or 16, you know you can get press charges and be tried as an adult, right? Because you're 18. So I'm going to tell you how it is. So if you want to bring this adult to the prom, and you know how like your age level, like they would be more mature than everyone else did. And if they can't handle it, you know, just people just being silly or whatever, or more likely to get into an altercation and something happen. Please know the level of discipline that will happen to them. Like, I would literally call them to get locked up. But so my question is, my my thought is, when you my answer is yes, you can bring them, but make sure you select someone that is mature enough to be in that type of situation, right? But they were a bunch of senior students that can be able to be friendly and admirable with everyone else. Because if you bring in a hot tempered person who really don't feel like got time to be around these kids and this and that, whatever, and you know that they easy to jump off, then you need to be ready for the consequences on the other side. So I'm actually making make an informed decision of who you decide to bring. If you're going to what age? Because you can't bring in non-diverse students into your prom. That's fine. But just know who you bring in. You know, and what they can handle. All right? Why is it mandatory for all sports to be vaccinated? Oh, why do they have to be vaccinated? So, um, before, when they were vaccinated for the winter, for the fall, winter, whatever sports, right? Fall sports, they didn't have, there was an option to get vaccinated. But once one got COVID, we had to shut the whole team down, and then the whole game got forfeited. So now, if you're vaccinated, we don't have, if one get COVID, we do not have to shut the whole team down. It's just that you got COVID, you go sit down, but we can go and play. Right? So that's why it's better for all of us to get vaccinated who on the team so that when we can still move forward and we don't have to uh, forfeit a whole season. Like most of the season was gone just because one person caught COVID and everybody from close contact, they had to be quarantined, you know, but now that, you know. That's 
Oh, it's not a school thing, it's a district and a state and a federal. That's all the questions. Oh, that's all the questions. <laughs>